Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Hanley, and today I'd like to use 3D foil or multi surface aerodynamics to design um, a flying wing. To do that, we first um, get, um, click the design menu on 3D foil, and as you can see, we have our initial surface. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to enter first the dimensions of um, the semi span in multi in multi surface. And what I want to have is the span length to be about five feet. So, of course, the semi span would be thirty inches, and the left cord that is the root cord in this case I want it to be 12 inches and the tip cord I want it to be 8 inches and at this point let's take a look at see what we have here um, on the screen now what I want to do is add some sweep so I'm going to have a 30 degree sweep angle and I want it to be about the leading edge, which is 0% cord. And let's change this resolution to 16. And let's take a quick look again. And now that looks, that looks great. So now I want to add an end plate. So to do that, I double click near the wing and that would um, pop up the um, edit surface uh, for surface number two and I want the winglet span to be four inches and I enter that and change the units to inches the next step is to get the left and the right cords the left cord should be the same dimension as the tip of the initial wing the main wing so that is 8 inches. I set left cord to 8 inches. And I want the right cord also to be 4 inches. So I set the right cord to 4 inches. And the sweep, I want to have zero sweep angle about um, the trailing edge. Oh, so looking at that, we can see this shape, this surface now appears. Um, one thing I would like to do is also go into the options for each wing and I want to click this option show out surface and shade the surface and in this wing I want to do the same thing show out the surface and shade the surface and Another thing I would like to do, in the previous wing we had the X resolution at 16, so I'm going to change this one to 16 as well. So when we look at the 3D um, um, rendering of the wing, we see we have the initial with swept wing and we also now have the winglet. But the winglet, as you can see, is in the same plane as the main wing so what I want to do is to go back to the winglet and we could have done this in one step of course click positions slash orientation and change the dihedral angles to 90 and then we want also the faces of the left and the right cords to point vertically as well so we change the left face angle to 90 and the right face angle to 90 and now we have a wing um, that is out of um, plane um, and what we can do um, and let's take a look at this again we now see um, the main wing and the winglet and what I want to do is snap them together so I click the easy snap button click the, this wing and then I click the main wing and the winglet would snap to the of main wing and we can look at it and we see that they are now together and this gives us half the wing 
now that we have half the wing we want to of course get the the whole wing and before we do that what I want to do is to move this wing more towards the origin it's a little bit off so to do that I change the X location to zero the Y location to exactly zero and that puts the main wing right at zero and then I want to snap them together again so I use the easy snap tool to snap both wings together and what we would like to do is to group the two set wing sections so I click the group button and then I click um, the, the sections the surfaces that I want in that group number one and then what I want to do is lock the whole group so I cannot drag it out of place so now that we have that I want to save um, the project and I'm going to call it half wing and save it and once it's saved um, I can then go back and use the menu to insert the design but it's mirror image and the design is half the wing and so it's we now have the entire flying wing just and the steps are first design one half save that half and then insert that save part as its mirror image and we see we now have by clicking the 3d button we now have the entire the whole flying wing so once we, we have that we can do some analysis we can click the angle of attack um, set the angle of attack which is 5 um, degrees um, we can set the speed to 330 miles an hour and then we could look at the reports for the forces and moments acting on acting on the wing and we see in this case we have at 5 degrees angle of attack we have a lift coefficient of 0.344 and we have a lift to drag ratio of 20. Also we can look at the forces and moments. We see we have a lift force of about three and a half pounds, a drag force of 0.177 pounds and we do have a substantial um, moment that is pitching the nose down which brings us to stability. We want to, we want to look at the longitudinal and the lateral, lateral stability results for this um, flying wing. And to look at the longitudinal results, we simply go to the reports and click longitudinal stability report. And we, um, it takes uh, probably a few seconds to do that report. And it's going to pop up the results right in this um, uh, region so we could wait for that just to give you an indication of the length of time it's going to take and now we see that we have the it, the stability report, the longitudinal stability report gives us the location of the neutral point from the origin and that is 2.73 meters from the origin. It gives us the lift curve DCLD alpha and gives us the moment coefficient curve and basically it tells us the angle of trim. Because we are using symmetric airfoils the angle of trim will be essentially zero and it tells us whether or not it's stable 
because the center of gravity is ahead of the neutral point location, then we have longitudinal stability. The next step is to find the lateral stability. And to do that, we just click the lateral stability report. Wanted to mention that this is the slope of the lift curve. This is the slope of the moment curve. And I meant, I said previously, it was the curve itself. So just wanted to mention that as we try to find the lateral um, stability um, report. So it should take um, a few seconds to do that as well. Now we have the lateral stability report. And I'm just quickly going to go over the report. We have um, the input angle of attack, the, the side slip angle, that which is zero uh, because the aircraft is symmetric. We have the roll rate and the yaw rate. They're both zero. Again, it's symmetric. We have the static derivatives. That is the rate of change of the um, yaw moment with respect to side slip angle and the rate of change of the roll moment with respect to side slip angle. And we can see it's measured per radians. Then we have the damping derivative. The damping derivative should be both be negative. Um, the rate of change of the roll moment with respect to roll rate and the rate of change of the yaw moment with respect to yaw rate. The cross derivatives we have as the rate of change of the of the roll um, moment with respect to yaw rate and the rate of change of the yaw moment with respect to roll rate. So these moments are about this datum point and usually we want this datum point to be the center of gravity point, which is in this case is not. The strength of the multi-surface aerodynamic um, method is the individual surface table. And we could bring up the reports menu and we look at the individual surface um, table. And what the individual surface table shows us is um, the contribution to the lift and the drag on the moments of each surface. So here we have four surfaces and one, two, three, four, and we wish to see their contribution to the lift, the drag, and the moments. And we see surface one and surface three, which are the main wing, surface two and surface four, the winglets, in, um, the main wing contribute to the lift, but the winglets do not contribute to the lift. Now here is the strength of the method because when we look at the drag we see the surface drag we have the drag from surface one the drag from surface three but on the winglets we have a negative drag that tells us that we are getting drag reduction from the winglets and you probably wouldn't see that um, unless you're doing a multi-surface aerodynamics. And the way we are getting um, drag reduction is because looking at the profile drag for the winglets, we do see we do have a, a, a positive profile drag, but looking at the induced drag, we see a negative induced drag. So we design our winglets in such a way that the induced drag is high, is a higher negative number than the profile drag. More information could be found at HanleyInnovations.com. Thanks for listening and watching. This is Dr. Patrick Hanley.